time to let you go, I think. Send you off to a better collector. In fact, I think it's time to call it a day on the Super Nintendo collection and just set up. As if that's going to happen. Hey gamers, I'm Cybersnack7, hope you're all well guys, back again with another video and back with the second part of my NTSC Super Nintendo Collections update video. Now, the beginning, yeah, it wasn't true but it was partially true because there will be a game leaving the NTSC Super Nintendo Collection. I broke my own rules and I'm selling one of my games. Uh, I swore I'd never do it but there's nothing sinister about it, I'm just doing it technically just to free some funds up to pursue other avenues in my gaming collection um so yeah i am letting go of earthbound it is now gone officially um it's been uh, raffled off on retro ram so i've got to thank scott brand for helping me uh get that set up and getting this to a new owner uh, as i say it's a fantastic condition game absolutely beautiful game i love the game i'm not disputing the fact uh, i'm going to miss it when it's gone but the way I see it, it's not a rare game. It's a very expensive game to buy and that's what the bugbear is about having it in the collection because it costs so much to buy. Where realistically, that it's not that rare as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you're talking of a rare, Super Torican 2, part sealed game this is, I would never ever think of getting rid of that because if I got rid of that, I'd, it'd take me years to find another one. In fact, I probably never would. That's why, things like this would stay so there are games within this collection that i would never get rid of but this one as i say it's not rare it's expensive and i guarantee you it leaves this weekend but by next year there will be another copy there back on that shelf that is a guarantee so it's just freeing up some funds as i say just to um let me pursue other avenues in my gaming collection which you'll see in the future of course so as I say, thanks to Scott Brand helping me. And if the winner does watch these videos, there you go, mate. This will be posted, sent to you the weekend, and enjoy it like I have. Right, let's get that out of the way. And speaking of Scott Brand, yeah, I'm going to talk about him again. He's just put a new video up, um, and he's talking about his ZX Spectrum Hit Squad collection, which he started. And it's a bit of a different video for him. Um, obviously, he's Sega mad, as well as I am a Nintendo mad. So it's it's a welcome change to see something different. And as I say, this community it inspires you in so many different ways uh, to pursue different games, pursue different systems, and just give everything a try. And obviously, where Scott's concerned, it's total nostalgia, going back to when he was a kid, and he loved his Spectrum. Sad on you, and silly boy for selling your Commodore 64, because at the end of the day, 64 is better. I didn't say that. Well, I did, but regardless of that, go and check out Scott's video, Sega Zombie. Fantastic guy, fantastic tuber. Do anything for the community, and he's really passionate about his games. That I can tell you. But uh, yeah, I'll try and leave a link down below. If you don't know who Sega Zombie is, Scott Brand, then you're living under a rock. Simple as that. Right then. Three minutes in, let's crack on guys. What I'm going to do, I think I've got about 85 games to show you now. So I'm going to show you 42 now and 43 in the next video. Uh, just to keep these videos shorter because as I say, the last video was a little bit long, about an hour and 20. Thanks for watching it guys. Uh, sitting down, bit bit watching it or watching it in one go. You know what I mean? As I say, this collection is getting bigger. Uh, it's only going to get bigger. There are games going to be added to the collection of course. Uh, I'm going to try I've got another one coming. Uh, and there's another three, as I said in the previous video, that I'm going to try and get this month. So the games are still entering the collection, which is good. So this collection ain't going on anywhere, thankfully. So let's move on. Let's crack on, guys. And let's crack on with the next 42 games. So we left it at this one, which was um, 
Jim Powers and the Lost Dimension, which we talked about, which is a it had potential to be a brilliant platforming game, but it's so difficult. The control mechanisms are pretty poor, to be honest with you, but still, it's in fantastic condition. I'd never get rid of this one, regardless. So there you go, that's Jim Powers, and that's uh, The Lost Dimension. Right, moving on. Now, you're going to have a lot of fighters in the bottom row here. There's a lot of fighters. So we'll start with the SNK bunch, uh, and the first one being the classic Samurai Showdown. This is a realistically a great version of Samurai Showdown. Of course, it will never compete with the likes of the SNK Neo Geo variant, of course, because that is the true conversion and the best conversion you could ever have. But still, for the uh, technology of the Super Nintendo, uh, it, it's, it doesn't do a bad job. You haven't got the zooming in and out uh, of, uh, zooming in, in and out look like what you get on the original game, but um, it doesn't matter. It's still a great one-on-one uh, -on -one fighter. I've heard, don't know how true this is, the Mega Drive is actually better than the Super Nintendo version. I'd like to try that, or if anybody knows who's got the Samurai Showdown on the Mega Drive, is that true? But yeah, this is uh, a great game. Love the SNK fighting games, as you will see in the future. But yeah, this is the first one, and that's uh, Samurai Showdown. Next one, of course, is another classic fighting game for me, and that is Fatal Fury. Uh, love these uh, fighting games. Fatal Fury is a classic one-on-one -on -one beater, of course, uh, and it introduced the Bogart brothers, as you can see on the front. And uh, it's it's considered the classic of the bunch. I personally think, as this series went on, uh, the games just got better and better. Um, but obviously, this one uh, being the original and the classic, it is such a good game. And to be honest, it plays just as well on the Mega Drive because I, I own Fatal Fury 1 and 2 on the Mega Drive as well, and they play just as well. So there you go. That is the second game. That is Fatal Fury. Now, third in the SNK lot is uh, a game I recently picked up. I'll just show this again because it's part of the series. And it's Fatal Fury Special. Uh, this is the third in the series. I think it's basically Fatal Fury 2, uh, but it's just tweaked with uh, different moves. And you've also got boss characters you can use in the game uh, also as as well, basically. So it's just a tweaked variant of uh, number two. But still, fantastic game. I showed you that in a recent video. Yet another one. But as I say, these games got better as the series went along. So that's the next one, guys. And that is Fatal Fury Special. Now this one, I consider to be my favourite fighting game. Everybody loves Street Fighter, everybody loves Mortal Kombat, but for me, um, being a fighting fan, I don't know what it is, this has such an attachment to me. Uh, from when I first started playing it in the arcades, I've got it on every conversion I can think of, apart from the Mega Drive, but I absolutely love Art of Fighting. This game to me is such a fantastic fighting game, absolutely love this game. Two main protagonists in it are just, I don't know, just memorable. I just love this fighting game. It can't beat the Neo Geo variant. Um, they do try very well on this one. Um, and I think it plays really, really well, to be honest with you. Fantastic conversion of the game. One of my, it is my favourite fighting game, without a question. Absolutely love. Uh, I just love the idea of the, 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 back in the day, the realism of when you fought one-on-one uh, -on -one and you, you could see the bruises forming on the face as you was fighting and progressing through the stages. It's just the realism of it and, and just the way it plays. It's a different fighting mechanic that I've never come across before. And as I say, these guys in this game, they progressed onto other games, King of Fighters and things like that. So legendary games. There's three in total. Uh, but obviously you can only get the first one on the Super Nintendo. But one of my all-time favourite fighting games, and that is Art of Fighting. Next one, of course, this is the classic. The classic, everybody knows this, so I won't go too much into detail. It's, of course, the classic Street Fighter 2. The one that made the Super Nintendo great, as far as I'm concerned. Without this game, um, the Super Nintendo wouldn't have been what it became over the years um and it's such an absolutely spot-on conversion of the original street fighter 2 um and the only way at the time to get the best game of street fighter rather than playing it in the arcades um and 
as I say, just a legendary game, full stop. Absolutely superb. Love this game. But there's the original Street Fighter 2. But my favourite has to be the next one, which is, of course, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. This one changed everything, obviously, allowing you to use the four boss characters as well as all the main characters. Obviously, you got the speed up so you can have turbo modes and things like that. So the variety is massive. Uh, and this game was a game changer for fighting games for me. Absolutely fantastic game. Love to be able to play Saget and uh, Bison and Balrog. And uh, who's the other one now? I can't think of his name now. Uh, Vega, there you go, Vega. Uh, but absolutely superb game. Easily the best Street Fighter game in the series for the Super Nintendo, at least, anyway. There's no two ways about that. But fantastic game. Just a, a good game, bettered with this one, as far as I'm concerned. So that's Super Street Fighter Turbo. Now, the next one for me, uh, I don't really like this game. Not really into it as much, which is Super Street Fighter. And um, Super Street Fighter 2. Graphic wise, very good. Um, I think I've said it a few times. I think the music in this is very tinny and it's, I don't know, something about the music in it, it, it ruins the game for me. Still a, a cracking conversion, uh, but could have been so much better. But as I said, I haven't played this one as much as the other uh, Street Fighters, but you've still got an, another few good characters in it. You've got Lee, I think it's Lee, or, and you've got Cammy, and you've got T Hawk. And uh, there's one more new character, I can't remember his name, but yet again, introduction to uh, new characters. Graphically, fantastic game, of course, but sound quality was pr pretty piss poor on this, to be honest. But still, a great game in the series, and that's uh, Super Street Fighter 2. The next one is a bit of a technolo te technological wonder. Let's get that word out, because trying to fit... Super, uh, trying to fit Street Fighter Alpha 2 onto a cartridge was a feat. And they did it, an absolutely amazing feat to get this game playing on a cartridge. The only bugbear about it is when you start each round, it pauses for a few seconds just to kind of load in the round, if you understand what I mean. But graphically, playability, it plays spot on. And it's a very, very good and a, a very brave, very brave move to try and put the Alpha 2 series on cartridge and it worked it really did so really really happy with that fantastic game uh, uh added into the street fight collection of course but as i say apart from that little pause you get for each round a technological marvel as far as i'm concerned to have that on a cartridge fantastic game so that is uh street fight alpha 2 sorry about the glare guys right so next two games um the first one the Mega Drive beats us on this because there's no blood in this game and it's a bit of a ball like I know. But still, I love Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2 are by far the two favourite games from that series. Uh, loved them in the arcade. Could never really do that good because I, I used to watch guys play uh, Mortal Kombat and uh, they were masters at it and that was terrible. But still, love the fatalities. Love the, all the, the moves and, you know, the, it, it, it wasn't... I don't think it was a skillful fighting game, really. He just had to... Uh, the, the only skill in it was learning all the death moves and learning all these things like that. So, technically, great game. Shame there's no blood in this variant, but, oh well. What can I say? We can't win them all. But uh, still, fantastic game series. Still carrying on today, and um, I haven't yet got Mortal Kombat 11, which I will be getting, but there's been a, a release of five new characters but I'm not going to download them because I'll wait for the Ultimate Edition to come out because it look, they look awesome characters. But anyway, back onto this. Mortal Kombat, the classic Mortal Kombat. Very, very good game. Shame about the blood not being in it, though. But this game is the best Mortal Kombat in my terms. Mortal Kombat 2 is the greatest fighting game of the series. Absolutely love this one. They hit the nail on the head. They got it right with the second one. Loads of um, secrets in here. Uh, characters to find and uh, loads of different moves friendship moves vitalities, uh fatalities there's everything in here the, the humor to it is absolutely awesome a brilliant game uh, and definitely um one of them games where the sequel betters the original without a doubt so there's oops nearly nearly there's uh the second game in the series and that is mortal kombat 2 
that's all the Mortal Kombat's. Moving on to a rare game. Not a rare is in rare, but rare the company. And uh, this is the classic Killer Instincts. And uh, this is obviously Rare's attempt at a fighting game. And it's not a bad conversion for the Super Nintendo. This game uh, plays better probably on the N64, uh, which is Killer Instincts Gold. Uh, but it'll never beat the arcade. Great game. Great, fantastic combinations. Uh, great characters, legendary characters in this game. It plays okay. It's not too bad. But this is fully complete. It's got the soundtrack and everything in it. So... Really happy with this, but yeah, you've got some classic characters in this. Not everybody's cup of tea, because uh, it, it can it be difficult to try and pull off all the combos and all that, but I really do enjoy this game uh, when I get to play it, but fantastic game. Um, I know there's a sequel in the arcade, but they never followed it up. Um, obviously, they, they did bring one out in the Xbox um, downloadable content, I think, and I did bring it out physical, but you can't beat the original. So that's the best one for me. So there it is, Killer Instinct. Next one uh, is a game. It's it's an average fighting game. I gotta admit, it's not an easy game to to play. Um, it's very very difficult, and it is Turtles Tournament Fighters. Uh, this is my original one from years ago. I bought this, and I ne I've never got rid of it. Uh, but still, fantastic characters. All the turtles in there. All the bad guys uh, from the actual cartoon at the time. Uh, after playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game, the uh, side-scrolling beta, I thought this was going to equally, uh, but unfortunately it's something about it, the difficulty on this game um, for a fighting game is uh, silly really, it is really, really difficult, you, you'll do, uh, it, even from the second fighter on, it's very difficult to beat uh, anybody, it really is stupid, but still, a nice little uh, addition to the collection, uh, never get rid of it of course, but uh, as I say, great game, just too difficult and silly really but fantastic all the, way, um, all the same and that is uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Tournament Fighters uh, next one is a Jalico game the famous Jalico this one is um, it's not a bad uh, one on one fighter it is uh, hey punk are you tough enough or technically just tough enough uh, but it's um, a one on one fighter from Jalico um, Realistically, unmemorable characters. I, I couldn't tell you one character in the game. I played it about three times. Um, I think I don't know. It's just an average fighter. It's it's one of them. It, you know, it's it's you can pick it up for a a fairly decent price uh, and in a decent condition. But as I say, the game itself is just an average one-on-one -on -one fighter. Uh, not very memorable. Nothing to write home about. But still. Glad to have it in this condition. That is one thing I can say about it. But still, it's all right. You know, it's uh, frustrating at times because this can be a difficult game yet again. Um, you get to certain uh, characters and then it starts ramping up from here to there. It's ridiculous, the, the, the hardness of the game. So still, glad to have it in the collection. And uh, it's tough enough. Now, the next one, uh, I didn't know existed. And I bought this, what, two, three years ago. And this was absolutely mint when I got it. Um, well, when I ordered it. Uh, but when it come through, um, the customs had opened the package. And then there was, there was actually a carton. And then they'd ripped the carton open and then stuffed them back in jiffy bags and posted them back to me. Um, and this game was mint when I got it. But as you can see, all the dents in it. Uh, the, the box was completely crushed uh, when I got it, which I was really, really unhappy about. Uh, I did have a go at the seller at the time, but I realised it wasn't the seller's fault. And so I did get back to you and apologise and all that. Um, but because you can see the customs had opened the bag, uh, checked the parts, and then they must have destroyed the original box and just shoved them in a jiffy bag and sent them back to me, uh, sent them forward to me sort of thing. But still, yes, this is a good game. The Power Rangers, um, the fighting edition, it is a really good game. Nice, nice mech uh, style of one-on-one -on -one fighter, of course. All the um, original uh, robots from the original uh, TV series in here. One-on-one -on -one fighter mode, but surprisingly a good fighting game. I really do like the mech kind of fighting games. Uh, shame, as I say, the condition. Uh, it's still, as you can see, the dents in the top and that. This was quite crushed bad, so I had to get the iron out and give it a good uh, iron over. But I've kept it. Uh, hopefully one day I'll pick up another one, but still, I'm still happy with it. You know, uh, but a, 
surprisingly good fighting game. If you've never played this, definitely give this a whirl. It's absolutely worth a shot uh, and a great little title to have in the collection, especially fighters. So that'll be the uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the fighting edition. Next one is... Uh, this was, I'm sure this was originally on the Amiga, I think. Um, and it's not a bad game, actually. Best of the best championship karate. And uh, as you can see, it's like a one-on-one a -on -one fighter. Uh, basically, you progress through the ranks. You also can uh, earn and have extra moves as you train through the game. So, you know, there's it's a lot of realism to it. Um, but as I say, uh, it is definitely... Uh, a, a decent one-on-one -on -one fighter um, if you're into this sort of thing. But yeah, it's good. It's uh, it's not too bad. Graphically, not too bad. It's like you start from the, the, the bottom of the pile and you have to work about to be the champ, of course. But uh, as I say, nice little uh, game to add to the collection. Haven't played it in a long, long time, so probably uh, interesting to put get this out and give it a good whirl. So that's um, best of the best karate. Okay, next one, easily my favorite wrestling game period uh and it is of course saturday night slam masters absolutely love this game uh capcom's classic uh, we have a visitor how you doing vic uh capcom's classic uh one-on-one -on -one wrestling game you've got some characters you've got Hagger from uh final fights and um some it's just some uh, it's just one of the greatest as far as i'm concerned wrestling titles around and uh you can get this on also the fm Towns marty as well but for some reason this this com this version of the game is easily the best and uh this is just going up in price and up this is believe me but fantastic wrestling game and easily my favorite wrestling game i've ever played so that's saturday night slam masters the next are a trilogy um jalico trilogy if i'm correct yes and these get better as the series progresses but the covers are something to be uh, desired and uh, i'm talking about rival turf and the artwork on this alone just makes you want to spend big bucks on it don't it i mean they put a lot of effort into this uh, cover as you can tell uh, the two main protagonists they look like they're mean and uh, they they mean business and they really want you to buy this game uh, seriously not uh, it is a terrible packaging uh, i don't know what the idea was around that it just hasn't worked for me if i didn't know anything about this game i wouldn't touch it with a barge pole to be honest with you but still and another average side scrolling beat em up affair graphically not too bad and say so this is the first in the series um and it, it does get better from uh the, from obviously the first one rival turf but the, the covers left to be desired but still a decent side-scrolling platforming game. Uh, quite tough towards the end, actually, to be honest with you. But still, I remember my cousin buying it years ago and we like sat, sitting in my room all weekend trying to uh, complete it. And it does get tough towards the end. But still, the cover's left to be desired, I must admit. But still, not a bad uh, fighting game. So that's uh, Rival Turf. So the second one, it betters it a little bit better. And obviously, it's Brawl Brothers. And this is the second in the... Uh, Rival Turf series, Brawl Brothers. Uh, this is a lot, lot better graphically uh, and playability. Still as tough, of course, because Jalico uh, made some seriously hard games, but still a fantastic game in all. Uh, and as I say, bettered the original without doubt. And you can see the cover and artwork is a lot, lot better than the original, of course. So that's the second, and that's Brawl Brothers. Now, the third in the series was my favourite of course and that is of course peacekeepers now peacekeepers is one of the hardest ones to find uh, especially in good condition it isn't an easy game to come across um, and this one can uh, go for quite a bit of money thankfully i think i got this one off retro dave nintendo a good few years ago when he was selling them on but yeah graphically superior gameplay superior um there's one part in this game where you're in like a sewer and um, I think this is a difference between the Jap version and this version because when you play this one, it doesn't actually show you or give you any clues how to get out of the sewer because you've got to keep on going through doors and then if you go through the wrong door, you revert back to the beginning and it's like a maze. 
where the Japanese version, I think, it kind of gives you clues on how to get out of there so you wouldn't spend bloody hours trying to figure out how to get out this one certain level. But apart from that, it is definitely the easily the, the, the best game in the series by far. Artwork, great artwork. Uh, same characters from the original Brawl Brothers plus a couple more, uh, but still graphically superior, better fighting game. Or uh, as, as I say, the, the series progressed and it got better. So definitely the best of the three and best of the bunch. But as I say, this one it ain't easy to find, especially in good condition. So that is uh, Peacekeepers, The Peacekeepers. Right, moving on to the next one, which is a side scrolling beta. And this is not a bad version of Double Dragon. Completely different to the original version of Double Dragon, of course. Uh, but same legendary characters in it, just a different story. Uh, but as I say, graphically, fight mechanics are different as well uh, because you can back kick and things like that. It's all different moves that you didn't have in the original um, Double Dragon. Uh, the level design, really good as well. I thought this weren't, weren't a too bad game, to be honest. Uh, really a good side-scrolling uh, side action uh, game. Uh, walk right and fight, as they say. But yeah, really, really good game. Uh, very happy to have that one, uh, and that's not an easy one to find either. Uh, so, but yeah, all in all, fantastic game. Well, happy to have that. So that's Double Dragon. And then we have probably one of the hardest games of giving, uh, and it is Battle Toads, Battle Toads, Battle Toads, Battle Maniacs. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, really frustrating side scrolling beta this is um it, it, it's it's easy then it just becomes ridiculously hard um and it's punishing it don't give you it just don't give you a chance really pain in the arse but still a game i had to have and this one can go for some money as well the battle toad series definitely but still a really good title to have into the collection but frustratingly difficult really frustratingly difficult so i don't this don't get much play from me because otherwise i'll have no joy pads left but that is uh battle toads in battle maniacs and then we have a bit of a collaboration and the collaboration is this one which you don't come across this game very often i don't see it anyway battle toads and double dragon now this one uh, is basically battle toads with the double dragon team in it but this is the most frustrating game I've ever played. It is ridiculously, ridiculously hard. I just can't get nowhere in it. It is such a difficult game. Uh, and it's, I don't know what it is. You just, you just know, you put a game on and you start playing it and it, it, it either you get somewhere or it frustrates you to the point of destruction. And that is this game for me. Great game. Double Dragon, yeah, but the Battle Toads. Once you get the Battle Toads, you know you're going to have a tough time on your hands. But still, it's a game I wanted in the collection. It finishes the collection off. And also, as I say, it's not an easy game to find. So, very happy to have it in the collection, of course. And that's Battle Toads and Double Dragon. Right, moving down. And we've got the first one in the series. I definitely want the second one, but the second one goes for top dollar, unfortunately. So it's coming, but when, I don't know. But let's talk about the first one, which is uh, Pocky and Rocky. Absolutely classic top-down shooting adventure. You might as well call it a shooting game, as you can see. It's like a top-down adventure. But this game, music-wise, story-wise, playability, it's just... A hidden gem this is an absolute hidden gem um i haven't yet played the second one i think the second one has a little bit of an rpg element to it where you can buy uh, items for your characters and things like that still the same format still the same game but you can just do a little f a few extras in it but boy that game commands some money i mean you're talking 700 plus um i've saw it give for a thousand odd but very happy to have this one believe me i bought this for uh 50 pound when it first came out brand new. And now you wouldn't pick this up for probably less than three. Easily. But still absolutely fantastic game. Definitely a hidden gem. If you haven't played this. Give it a whirl. Download it and give it a go. It's absolutely fantastic. A must own game for a Super Nintendo uh, collector. Trust me. That's Rocky and Pocky. Right. Time for a, a little drink. Because my throat's getting sore. Okay. 
Next one in the series, another top down shooter, another classic game. Never ever finished it, never completed it. I, I've seen the end and I probably, I, I think I got through about eight or nine levels of this and I just got totally stuck. But still a cracking little title and it's Zombies Ate My Neighbours. Absolutely fantastic game. As you can see, it's like a top down adventure, two characters, a boy and a girl. And basically the world gets took over by zombies and aliens and things like that. And it's just like a puzzle game where you've got to go through the level, find keys, unlock doors, and just basically find the exit as, as quick as you can. But it gets relentlessly difficult. But the music and the graphics and the atmosphere to this game, second to none, an absolute classic and a must yet again own game. Absolutely superb game to own. This is, and that is Zombie Ain't My Neighbours. Or the UK variant, Zombies. Okay, a game I didn't really own back in the day. I know my friend owned it and he kind of liked it. Never really got into this series. Um, I know there's about four of them or five in Japan. Uh, but they only ever released one over here. And that is, of course, Legend of the Mystical Ninja. And this is a bizarre, like, it, it tends to be like a platform game. Slash, like, top-down um rocky and pocky style of game and then you got like you got so many variants in this game you got like giant robots you can drive and platforming elements to it it's and it's got rpg elements to it it's um it's a game unto itself it's such um uh, an original game and as i say it's a shame we never got any more but in japan i think you got about five of them so i'm happy to have this one regardless as i say it's, an, it's a game i didn't buy originally back in the day uh, just didn't appeal to me, but I'm glad I got it, and I, I got this super cheap, 50 quid, uh, yet again, I got this 50 quid thing going, but I managed to pick it up for 50 pound, and I'm glad I did, because yet again, these games just shot up in price super quick, uh, and it's in fantastic condition, but if you've never played it, give it a whirl, it's something different, uh, something uh, you'll never come across uh, that often, but still very, very happy to have it, and that is the legend of the Mystical Ninja. Okay, this one I got at the beginning of the year, and uh, this is, of course, um, what is this called now? Zoom tell, yeah. Ah, right. It's a different name in the UK uh, variant, uh, and this is from the Bitmap Brothers, if I'm correct. Pete, on a retro trip will put me right, I'm assuming you will. But it is Soldier of Fortune. AKA the Chaos Engine. Uh, why they changed the name in the uh, American region, I don't know, but I think the cover's really quite good. Uh, Pete's Nestastic fan with this one, and uh, he was a bit worried about it because it was so new. He obviously thought it was probably some sort of a uh, repo edition, uh, a repo uh, game, and I took the punt, got it for about 60 quid, and it turned up, and it's absolutely mint, and it's a bang on full original copy so i've got to say thanks to pete for that uh for uh pointing me in the right direction and i'm glad i took the risk on this one but this is an absolute class top down puzzle shooter uh everybody must have played this once in the life on because it's come out in like every variant available mega drive super nintendo amiga uh you name it it's out on it um so absolutely fantastic game glad to have it love the cover variant of course because it's totally different i think i prefer the uk uh cover variant than the us but still one of them games you don't come across very often and especially in this condition but fantastic game to own and that is soldier of fortune right the next one i originally had this on japanese uh graphically fantastically uh, graphical game uh, and really original platforming game and that is uh maybe mullard in cold shadow and that is of course the donald duck game graphically fantastic uh uh like uh like platform game absolutely superb seen nothing like it animation is superb gameplay is brilliant and uh, i really really enjoyed this game uh, some great elements and I mean I think with this one if you want to continue there's a bonus stage and you've got to complete the bonus stage to get continues to actually be able to continue so they don't make it easier for you uh, to continue in this game but trust me it's um, it's I never heard of this uh, I just found it by found out by chance watching uh, YouTube as you do and uh, this come up in one of the platforming uh, 
top games you could buy. But as I say, I got this originally Japanese and I sold it on and I managed to pick up a fantastic copy on the American format. But yeah, if you have never played this, graphically superb. Music's good. It's an all-round cracking little platforming game. So that's uh, Mary Mullard in Cold Show. Is that Cold Shadow? Yeah, Cold Shadow, starring, of course, Donald Duck. Now, the next three games have no need for introduction because they are three of the best platform games you could ever imagine to buy on the Super Nintendo. And the first one being the best, of course, which is Donkey Kong Country. This game absolutely changed uh, the platforming genre forever. Uh, Rare brought this out and you, are, it's never been repeated, even with the newer ones for me, the newer um, Donkey Kong Countries. It still doesn't beat the originals. These are absolutely fantastic games. This one I did complete. Um, such variety uh, and gameplay and music and atmosphere in this game is absolutely amazing. It really, really is. And uh, a legendary Super Nintendo game. And I'll be surprised if there is, uh, if not one collector who collects the Super Nintendo don't own this. At least this one game at least. But this game speaks for itself. And that is Donkey Kong Country. Now the second one, of course, Donkey Kong Country 2, and that is Diddy Kong's Quest. And this introduces Diddy Kong and, of course, Dixie Kong. Um, and this one is uh, more of the same, but you get like mini games through it and uh, to earn extra lives and to earn extra bananas and things like that. And it gets difficult, a lot, lot more difficult than the original one. Um, never completed this one, uh, never even got halfway through it, to be honest with you, but still... It does get difficult, but still a classic game to own, of course, in the series. And that one is, of course, Donkey Kong 2, Country 2, Diddy Kong's Quest. Now, the third one, of course, I'm going to show you is, of course, Donkey Kong Country, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble. Now, this one I haven't put a lot of time into, to be honest with you. Um, great to have the full series, of course. Uh, yet again, more of the same. <clears throat> I'm assuming it's going to be like the second one. Uh, not sure on the difficulty of the game. I'm assuming it's going to be just as difficult as the second one. Uh, but yeah, very, very difficult. Um, still a fantastic game and a must own to have it in the series, of course. You've got to have all the Donkey Kongs. So as I say, I can't really talk about this much apart from the fact that it's just more of the same and still a classic game to own in the series. And that's obviously Donkey Kong Country 3. And that's uh, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble. Now the next three games are some, well, they are my favorite platformers, especially the set, the first two. And the first one, I remember coming home from work and there's a game shop in Birmingham and it was um, Mr. Disc. And I always used to go in there every single day to see if they had any new NTSC games. <laughs> and I went in there the one day and sat on a shelf was this, the wrong one. Let's try that again. They're out of order. Was this, that's better, Super Star Wars. And I thought, OMG, I want that game. So I literally run out the shop, caught the buzz home, got all the way home. Because at the time, I didn't have any money. It was, I always used to keep it in the house. So I had to go all the way home. It took me about three, three quarters of an hour. Got the, got the money, went all the way back, just before it shut, grabbed this copy, and I was so stoked to have this game. It is an absolutely fantastic game. Music, atmosphere, Star Wars game through and through. It is such a fantastic game, but it can be blooming difficult. Um, you get to the second stage um, where you're on the Jawas uh, in the desert and you're on the Jawas like a land crawler, and then you get inside it. And you really stick, you've got to try and do that game, uh, do that level in one go. Get to the boss, kill him. If you don't, it just becomes such a pain for you because you lose all your weapons. And it's just relentlessly difficult with the, the lower weapons that you pick up. Uh, but you get past that second stage, you have a chance. But this game does get tough. Very, very tough. Um, but still an absolute awesome game. Absolutely love this game. I've played this game to death. Super Star Wars. Absolutely loved it. But then something else come out something very very special this one appeared super empire strikes back and this game is just as good if not better but this game is absolutely balls hard 
how I ever, ever completed this game, I do not know to this day. I did it, got to Vader, killed him, and I actually completed this game. Going back and playing this game nowadays, it is so difficult. I, I can't even get off the third level. It's seriously, seriously hard. My gaming skills have just lowered in, you know, I'm, I'm an old man now, I'm getting there and all. But honestly, this game is a fantastic game, but relentlessly difficult. But yet again, music, atmosphere, just the Star Wars theme, it's just all there. Absolutely classic game, absolutely love this game. Easily my favourite platform game, even though it's relentlessly hard. And then, of course, last but not least, I'll show this one again. The third in the series, which is Super Return of the Jedi. Now, this one was the weakest of the three, to be honest with you. Um, yet again, I did this. I played it and I did it. And going back to this and playing this, this is silly, silly hard. It's really difficult. And I think I just can't get my head around how I managed to play this game and go through it so easy when I was a kid. I just could never do it nowadays. But yeah, weakest in the series Yet again, more of the same format, still fantastic levels, mixture of shooting, platform. Um, it's just everything to do with the entire film rolled into one fantastic package. And as you can see, these are the JVC editions. I, I always wanted the JVC. If you're going to get these editions of Star Wars, get the JVC editions. They are the proper one with the full colour full color manual and everything like that. So these are definitely the ones to buy. But yeah, absolutely stoked to have this fantastic game. The weakest in the set, but still a ridiculously hard game. And you've got to have a bit of Star Wars in your collection, trust me. You can't beat Star Wars. So that's Super Return of the Jedi. Moving on to another film franchise. Absolutely love this game. Played this to death when I was a kid. Um, and it is, of course, the classic Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures. Love this game. Really, really great game. Follows the films. All three films in one game, where, which uh, is really quite a good uh, mix uh, a lot of platform ga uh, platformers shooting sections in there um, puzzle elements and it, it, you got all the classic scenes from all the movies in this game uh, a lot of like little uh, synthesized speech and things like that uh, when he dies or when he gets through to certain levels and that fantastic game i absolutely love this game uh, this game can be a challenge as well uh, very very much so believe me but uh, love this game always will go back to this and play this uh, as I say, can't beat Indiana Jones, and yet again, one of those movie tying games that actually works and it is actually enjoyable to play. So that's uh, Indiana Jones' Greatest Adventures. Next is two games. The first one I got to the very end, and uh, I've just balls it up uh, because uh, is two sections to this game. It's clock of a god game slash platforming game, and I'm talking about Actorizer. One of the first games, of course, to come out on the Super Nintendo. But this, as you can see, it's a side-scrolling platform game. And also like a top-down view god mode, where you've got uh, different parts of the world. Uh, map you got to go around, and you've got to help them uh, progress and save them from um, illnesses and build the towns and that. But then you go down onto that level, and then you've got to progress through um, certain... Uh, side scrolling levels uh, to beat bosses and then once you beat that boss then that area becomes free and people can basically get on with their life and that and all you got to do is keep it keep your eye on uh, the different sections of the map make sure everything goes goes well otherwise it just you know everything goes to pot but as i say i got more or less all the way through this game and i got to the one top down section and something went wrong and i couldn't solve the issue and it just, it just, I just could not continue, couldn't carry on with the game, which is a shame. But still, fantastic game, very original. Uh, seen nothing like it since, like with a mixture of top down and, of course, the side scrolling action variant. Brilliant game, and not a bad game to have any collection. So that's Act Razor. Then come along the second one, which blew my mind graphically. I thought, man, it's going to be the best platforming game ever. Specifically, just platforming game, no god mode in this one. Uh, but boy, was it a disappointment, and it's Actraiser 2. Graphically, it looks amazing. Plays brilliant, atmosphere is brilliant, but the, the controls are very clunky. Um, it, it's the control system itself that messes this game off. If the controls were more fluid, 
uh, this game would play so much better. But it is awesome graphically. Absolutely fantastic game. I really, really, uh, they really missed a trick with this game. They could have made this so much better. Uh, but still great to have it. I always put it on occasionally to think myself, maybe if I play it again, I'll enjoy it a little bit more. But every time I play it, it's still the same. The graphic, uh, the, the control system let it down massively. It's a shame. But still a great game. And there was a lot of potential to make that so much better. But never mind. Actraiser 2. Right, on to a few RPGs. And we're coming to the end, nearly, of this section. So, oh, they ain't too bad. Be about 50 minutes, hopefully. Right, the next one, two, three, four, five are RPGs. Okay, so this one, um, in fact, what we'll do, we'll start with this one, which is The Secret of Mana. Um, obviously, I'm not... A massive um, RPG fan, but there, as I say, there's about five or six RPGs I wanted in the collection. This being one of them, because this is like a real time, uh, real time strategy. It's like you, you're walking around and you, you, when you come across an enemy, you fight, blah blah blah. I, I'm not too clued up on RPGs. I gotta admit that. Um, but this is supposed to be a fantastic, fantastic RPG to, to own to play. Uh, and one of people's favourites, that, that is no two ways about it, but this is beautiful, fully complete, with a map and everything like that, and uh, I really need to sit down, I think in my, uh, well, probably when I retire, I ain't going to want to play games, but you never know, I might want to sit down and, you know, grab me a few hours when I've got time to kill and play these sorts of games, but as I say, a must own, apparently this, and it's a fantastic game to own in the collection, so very happy to have this one, and that's Secret of Mana. Right, the next one is a sequel or a spiritual sequel, um, I'm assuming. And this is Secret of Evermore. And this is more futuristic, same style of gameplay. But this is more set in the future. And uh, you're obviously a boy and his dog. He gets zapped through a time machine. And uh, it's as I say, it's more of the same uh, kind of strategy uh, gameplay. But graphically, really, really nice. Uh, and I, I got this one first before I got Secret of Mana because I always wanted to have this. And I played a bit of this. And it's it's a pretty decent game. It really, really is. Beautiful conditioner. Fully complete, of course. But well, happy to have that. So nice to have Secret of Mana and Secret of Evermore. Whether they are direct sequels, I don't know. Let me know down below in the box. That'd be interesting. But there you go. That's the next one. That's Secret of Evermore. And the next one. Oh, I've still got the uh, plastic on that. I ain't got the plastic on it. Right, the next one, of course, uh, this one is an absolute classic. Never got a, a UK uh, release, weirdly, but this is the absolutely classic Chrono Trigger. Now, this game apparently is the RPG to own. Um, I've played a bit of it. I really have put some time into this one, uh, rather than the others. But this one, obviously, I wanted to see what all the fuss is about, and it's really, really great RPG, I must admit that. Um so I got into it, but time constraints, you just I can't sit there for hours and then just ain't got that kind of time anymore. Um, but still, an absolute must own, and this one stays in the collection. As I say, it's mint, fully complete, with everything in it. And uh, one of these days, one of these days, I might sit back down and give it a, give it a whirl again. But still, an absolute fantastic game to own in the collection, and that's Chrono Trigger. Next one is, of course... The classic Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Uh, this one's part sealed. I've had this one for a long, long time. Now, this one I got with um, the the Power Rangers fighting game that I showed you that was crushed. Now, this one and that one come together. That one was crushed and this one come immaculate, thankfully, in the same package. They shoved them both into a jiffy bag. This one come out top and it, it, it didn't even get touched, and that one got squashed, unfortunately. But still, part sealed, absolutely classic RPG. Turn-based adventure, this one I know for a fact. Uh, definitely one to have in the RPG collection for your Super Nintendo. Brilliant, it never, never been repeated, really. Um, but uh, as I say, fantastic game. Loads of secrets, loads of, uh, you know, the, the story's huge, massive game to play. But as I say, yet again, time constraints. I just think at the time to sit down and play, but... 
something I won't get rid of, weirdly. Yeah, I'll get rid of Earthbound, but I can't get rid of this. Yeah, I know. But still, it's part seal, so I'd never do that anyway. And this game isn't overly priced. You could pick this up for a decent price anyway. So, But fantastic condition, of course. But there you go. That is the Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Okay. Next one is, of course, an absolute classic. Every Super Nintendo owner should have it in the collection, of course, and that's The Legend of Zelda. Don't have to tell you about much. This, uh, this is just a, an ultimate game. Uh, they are re-releasing this on the Switch, A Link to the Past, uh, with a, a new polished uh, version of it. Uh, I haven't yet ordered it. I probably will do eventually, but this game is an absolute classic game. This one I've had... Well, you, you just have to sit down and put this on, play and finish it. It's just... Uh, there are people out there that don't like Zelda, and I, I'm not an overly fanatical Zelda, you know, fan. But something about this game, this game was the one um, that started it all for me, of course. But it's the only one. Is it the only one? I've actually done two or three Zelda games. I haven't done any more. I haven't even done Breath of the World. But this one, absolute classic, top down adventure, absolute must to own in the collection. Definitely pick this up, guys, if you haven't got it. And uh, that is the classic Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. Right, one more. One more I'm going to do. And this is this is the last one, guys. And this is a, a classic arcade game. Absolutely love this game. Uh, great pick up and play, put in and play for half an hour sort of thing. And it's the classic Super Buster Bro. And, uh, of course, this is the one where like, you have the, the bubbles you got to burst. And you travel all over the world and you've got to burst all the bubbles on a level. It's a fantastic game. This is really, really is a brilliant game. And one, uh, it doesn't come up very often. I haven't seen it for a while uh, in this condition. And uh, this is yet again, this one shooting up in price. But a fantastic game. Absolutely awesome arcade conversion of... Uh, I can't remember the name of it, actually. What the what was, what was the name of this game originally? Because I know it's not called The Buster... Buster Brothers, is it? It's called something else. Let me know down below because it's just like gone over me at the name of it. I can't really remember it. But still, absolutely awesome pick up and play. Quick fix game. Absolutely must to own in the collection. So there you go, guys. That is the last one I'm going to show you in this video. Uh, and then I'll do my third episode and I'll finish off with about 43 games in the next episode, guys. So as I say... There's going to be plenty more Super Nintendo games coming into this collection. Yeah, I'm sad to see Earthbound go, but it will be back. It's not going forever. That's all I'm saying. But uh, anyway, guys, I've kept you for uh, nearly 50 minutes just over. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this second half uh, and I'll do the next half in a couple of weeks time. There will be something new coming up really soon. I'm working on that video. Uh, I want to get it right because it's um, something I've been passionate about for a long time. I've never really talked about the collection and um, I don't want to get too much into detail, but I want to do it right. So new set of videos coming up sh uh, very soon. Something different, put it that way. It's not going to be Super Nintendo. There you go. Say no more. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, thanks for your support as always. Uh, thumbs up. Leave your comments and I'll try and get back to you as quick as I can because I know it's, it, it can be a bit... Uh, daunting and a bit busy for me most of the time so if i can get back to it i will i'll always like your comments and always sum it up there's no two ways about that guys but um anyway i'm going to leave it here guys thanks for watching uh, and as i say you're all legends and as always i am cyber snake seven keep playing guys and remember always keep watching all the best